Hi everybody, welcome back to the Master Flow Plumbing YouTube channel. Today's video is going to talk about how to contact your plumber and when to contact your plumber. I find it necessary to do this video because in this ever-changing world that we live in, there's a whole new generation of customers out there that don't necessarily know how to contact their plumber and they certainly don't necessarily know how to act when they do. So I'm going to put out this video and basically kind of talk about a few things. First thing you need to realize when you're contacting a plumber is that most plumbing contractors are not Amazon or Home Depot. We are not a big huge corporation. We don't have a staff of people to answer our phones for us. In my particular case here in Michigan, I live in a very busy area with very few plumbers and my phone just blows up every single day. I literally have days where I get over 100 phone calls. And sometimes I have customers that will ask or tell me a story about they contacted some other plumbing company and they never got a phone call back and it's like, well, there's an explanation for that. It's not because they don't want to call you back, it's because there's just simply not enough hours in the day to return 100 phone messages. So we do the best we can. So when contacting a plumber, um, because you have a plumbing emergency or whatever, you got to try to be patient with, uh, with most of us. Now, there are some big companies out there that actually do have staff on hand to actually answer your phones and stuff like that, but I think you're going to find that most of the time those companies are going to be quite a bit more expensive. Uh, however, you know, I mean, there are situations where you might not have a choice and that might be your best option. Let's talk about a little bit about why you need to contact a plumber. The obvious reason is you have a plumbing emergency or you have some plumbing work you need to have done. Uh, those are the reasons to contact a plumber. So with that said, is it necessary to contact a plumber on a Saturday afternoon? You bought a new faucet at Home Depot and you want to have it installed sometime in the next couple months. No, it's not necessary to call us on a Saturday and disrupt our our Saturday work um, or, you know, I mean, you know, time away, you know, with our family or something like that. Um, and if you do find yourself compelled to call on a Saturday or Sunday to, you know, try to set up a service call, that's fine. But if we don't answer, don't just keep calling, you know, leave a message and let us call you back on Monday morning. There are quite a few things that are, you know, make my job difficult. Phone is probably the the biggest one that makes my job difficult and uh, it's a love-hate relationship because obviously that phone is key to my business and, and my clients being able to reach out to me. So with that said, there are some things that will really, really get on a plumber's nerve. The biggest one is people will repeatedly, they will call and when they hear the voicemail greeting come on, they immediately hang up and they call back immediately. And I've had customers do this six, seven, eight times in a row to the point where you finally just, and, and I've not done it, I've not lost my cool with anybody on the phone ever before, but sometimes you just feel like grabbing your phone and going, what? You know, and yell at them, you know, why are you calling me? You know, and nine times out of 10, when they finally do leave you a message, you find out it was exactly that. They're trying to just schedule a job and, you know, maybe they're Mr. Type A personality and they're used to being able to talk to somebody immediately. So they just keep calling and calling and calling and calling until they, you know, I, I think the idea is to try to get you to pick up your phone. And it's like, just leave a message. Uh, I personally have a voicemail greeting that gives pretty specific instructions about what I need to hear from you. I don't answer my phone when I'm on a job, very rarely anyway. I feel like when I'm in a customer's house, I'm there being paid by them to do a job for them. And they're not paying me to answer my phone and take your call. So with that said, you know, always listen to the voicemail greeting and listen to the instructions on what it says. Now, my, my personal greeting on mine, first things I you know, do is obviously you know, welcome you, you know, for calling me. Then the second thing I, I ask is don't repeatedly dial my phone. You know, just listen to the message in its entirety and leave me a message. Um, I always ask for your name, your phone number, your plumbing needs that you need and, and also your address and that allows me to filter through that information before i even call you back so that when i do call you back i'm prepared to actually discuss you know what your plumbing needs actually are other than that you know i mean when you do call a plumber you know one of the other things that will drive a guy like me crazy is when i get a homeowner on the phone and they've already self-diagnosed their problem you know that's fine i mean obviously if you have a broken pipe it's, it's perfectly fine to tell me it's a broken pipe but don't Start telling me how you, what you think I'm going to need to do to, to, you know, when I get there to fix your problem. Tell me you've got a broken copper pipe in your basement. That's all I really need to know. I mean, I've pretty much got everything on my truck to repair a broken copper pipe of almost any size in a home, you know, which is usually not any larger than one inch. So I have all this stuff on the truck. 
Um, I don't need, uh, you know, the engineer customer, you know, who, you know, has done a little bit of plumbing at their, their cottage up north, you know, before telling me, it's like, oh, you know, I think you're going to need this fitting, that fitting, and, you know, this kind of solder, and blah, 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 blah. My grandfather was a plumber. We don't need to hear all that. But give us the information that we asked for, and then the conversation, because I've got 99 other people I need to call back. So, you know, again, you know, when you're contacting your plumber, the best thing you can do is have patience, number one. Number two, you want to, you know, just provide us with as much information as, as, as we need to determine what we need to do with our schedule. And what I mean by that is, is that, yeah, you have a broken pipe in your basement or you have, have to have a water heater replaced. I've done thousands of water heater installs in my life. I need to know the basics. I need to know what kind of condition your home is in, whether there's a lot of clutter around, am I gonna have a clear path down to your basement? Do I have to go through a walkout you know, basement door? And am I gonna have to deal with a bunch of landscape on the outside with my cart trying to roll your new water heater down a hill? You know, all that stuff. I mean, that's all stuff I'm going to ask you on the phone. And I need to know the answers to before I ever show up to your job. So it's also important to be respectful to us plumbers on the phone. Um, I get people all the time that actually, They'll call up and they will, you know, tell me they've got a plumbing problem and they want to get on my schedule. Well, that's, 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 what, that's how it works, okay? So when I tell those customers that I am booked for a couple weeks in advance, you know, they sometimes will get really disrespectful and say, well, you know, really? You know, is that, you know, is that really how it is? Of course, you know, when I tell you that I'm booked for a couple weeks, I'm booked for a couple weeks. Um, and any plumber that tells you that's going to be telling you the truth. They're not just telling you that to get out of talking to you. Um, so be respectful. Um, and, you know, when you get us on the phone, I mean, we understand that, you know, by nature of you calling us, you may have an emergency. You're rattled. You're upset, you know, because you have water maybe gushing all over the place. Uh, we're going to be doing a video probably in the next couple weeks, you know, that's going to talk about how to shut off the water in your home which would be always the number one thing you do before you even contact a plumber if you have an emergency um, and you, know, you have water just gushing everywhere, you need to know how to turn your water off to your house. So if you already know how to do that, shut the water off. Kind of, kind of clean things up, relax a little bit, and then call us. Because when you call me up and you're all stressed out, uh, believe it or not, it kind of gets me kind of stressed out. I mean, we we want to help you. Um, we do. All plumbers want to help their customers, um, you know, and, and get there and do a good job for you. But, you know, you got to try to, you got to try to stay calm and you got to try to stay respectful. And if we can't get to you right away, don't get upset. Help it that we have, you know, so few plumbers in the area and it's going to be a long way to get us out to your home. We understand it's inconvenient, uh, but there's not a lot we can do about that. So again, just try to be respectful. Other than that, uh, there's probably not a lot to talk about you know more about you know when you're contacting your plumber so again just try to understand that most of us are answering the phones ourselves these days and we don't necessarily have a you know person answering the phone for us in an office uh, some do you know there's plumbers out there that are like that yeah but my particular case never really worked out because you know other than my wife when she used to work for the business and she answered the phone she was really good at actually she had a really high success at landing the jobs what I found over the years in my particular business is that when I talk to a customer on the phone, I have almost 100% success rate in scheduling that job. Most people, I believe, feel confident talking to me on the phone that I do know what I'm talking about and that I do know what I'm doing and that they've called the right, the right person. So a non-plumber answering the phone <laughs> sometimes is, isn't like that. And the other person on the other side, again, they're, they're probably agitated, they're upset about a plumbing issue in their home and uh, they're looking for that reassurance and well you know so with that said if you end up with somebody on the phone who's not a plumber and they're just answering the phone be patient with them that's probably just somebody just answering the phone and the person they're going to send out to your home to do the repair is going to be quite qualified to do so so with that said that's going to be the end of today's video we appreciate you tuning in again click that subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and we appreciate you you folks have a nice day